Right, so next up we have uh, Felix Grises talking about building AstroBert, an, a language model for astronomy and astrophysics. The floor is yours, Felix. And it is a digital library of Great. astrophysics uh, papers. And it provides many tools and services to explore its millions of records. Standard filters like offer, a year, title, um, which can be combined with Boolean operators such as and, or, not, but it also allows for more sophisticated queries such as exploring the citation reference graph, finding co-reads, or sorting papers by similarity. We are always looking for ways to improve ADS, and in recent years there have been many advances in the field of information retrieval, natural language search, and we would like to take advantage of them, and we think we are in a unique position to do so because we have direct access to so much data. That's why we are building a language model for astrophysics, which we are calling AstroBird. So why build a language model? The example I like to give is, if you ask an astronomer for papers from the ESA Planck mission, they will be able to understand you mean the space satellite, not Max Planck the author, or Planck the institute, or the Planck constant, or any of the other meanings of Planck. The astronomer is able to navigate the inherent ambiguities of natural language from contextual clues. Context of the query, the context of the data, all that is information the astronomer is able to use. Currently, this kind of query requires specific keywords. You can restrict by year range or specify to not or return papers where the author is Max Planck. However, that won't filter out papers that just mention Max Planck in the text. You can also, in specific cases, use outsourced tags from Simbad or Ned. Those are manually created and focus on specific astronomical objects. Our hope is that Astrobert being tailored for astrophysics, can help with these kinds of queries automatically or semi-automatically and do so better than generic language models. Our effort to build AstroBird has two main motivators, and first one is the now famous BERT paper from Google in 2018. So BERT is a transformer neural network model with attention, and it's modeling English from the Wikipedia in the brown corpus. That core model was then used to achieve state-of-the-art performances on 11 downstream tasks, and some of those are sentiment analysis, semantic role labeling, word disambiguation. But while the BERT paper goes into technical details of the problems they solve for sequence-to-sequence -sequence modeling, from a high-level point of view, what we care about is that they show that the transformer model can be used as a core for many downstream natural language tasks. Our second motivator is Cybert by Allen AI in 2019. They took the BERT approach and adapted it to model English from scientific papers taken from the Semantic Scholar corpus. They showed that this adapted model outperforms the original BERT on various scientific domain tasks. This is part of a larger trend that adapts generically successful models to specific language domains. You could say it transfers knowledge from one domain to another sometimes. What we take away from Cybert is that it showed that BERT can be tailored to specifically scientific text. And we want to tailor it even more specifically to astrophysics. So that's our motivation for AstroBERT. For the remainder of this talk, I will be providing technical detail on how we leveraged our database of scientific papers to design tasks to train AstroBERT, showing the results from the experiments we've run so far and highlighting where AstroBERT outperforms the other models, and finally concluding with our plans for the future, that is, how we will be integrating AstroBert within ADS and how we will be providing the astrophysics community with access to AstroBert. I'll now dive into the technical details of our work, and the first step in training any model, neural network or other, is data preparation. This step usually ends up taking longer than we'd like to admit, but without any clean data, we can't train anything. In our case, we have over 15 million records in ADS, but they're not all appropriate for training a model. Some are old and we don't have the content, only the title and the authors. Some were digitized using optical character recognition from scans, which always contains errors. And some contain leftover XML tags and even unprintable Unicode characters. So after cleaning and filtering, we are left with over 300,000 recent astronomy papers containing close to 3 billion words. After filtering and cleaning, we still need to transform the text into a representation that is appropriate for the model, and that's the role of the tokenizer. Bird and Cybert provide their own tokenizers, of course, but we wanted our own with a vocabulary more tailored uh, towards astronomy. 
We used our data to train a word piece tokenizer. This is the same technology as Bird and Cybert and set its vocabulary size to 30,000, also very similar as Bird and Cybert. Here we have a simple example of what the tokenizer does. It transforms a text string into a list of integers. It starts by adding end and beginning markers and common substrings are transformed into a single token while rarer substrings are transformed into multiple tokens, usually in a kind of a stem plus affixes manner. Our Astrobird tokenizer ends up having 25% overlap with BERT's vocabulary and 35% overlap with Cybert's vocabulary over the total um, number of tokens. This is expected, you know, considering Cybert is modeling scientific papers and BERT is modeling Wikipedia English. And at the end, our final data set size is close to 4 billion tokens, a size very close to the size used to train the original BERT. With our data prepared, we can now design tasks to train our model and uh, our first two tasks, which are designed to leverage the fact that we have lots of unlabeled data, are the standard mass language task and the next sentence prediction task. So training a model on the mass language task means feeding the model sentences from our data, a tokenize in which we've masked a random sample of those tokens, and we are asking the model to predict what tokens fit those masks. Doing this, our data takes about eight hours over each epoch. I've put an example on screen. I'll let you fill in the blanks. In the next sentence prediction task, we are, in addition to doing the math language task, so it's done jointly with the MLM task, we are feeding the model two sentences and we are asking it, are these two sentences uh, consecutive in the data? And I've added an example here. I'll let you figure it out if you think it's consecutive or not to the first sentence. Training on the joint MLM plus NSP task takes much longer, as you can see, about 22 hours per epoch. And that's something we're looking into improving. Training models on joint tasks is usually seen as a way to make models more general and useful for downstream tasks. And the first of our downstream tasks is named entity recognition. We extracted about 900 organization names from 44,000 acknowledgement sections. And uh, here is an example of a labeled sentence. Because NER was trained on a smaller data set, each epoch is much faster, 90 seconds per epoch, and we evaluated using tenfold CRAS valid validation for the NER task. I want to emphasize that all three of these models were uh, built on top of each other. So first we trained a MLM model then we trained a NSP plus MLM model, and both of those models were then used to train separate named entity recognition models. Just so you can make sense of the training times reported, here is the hardware we used and other technologies. So the models were trained on a single machine with two V100 GPUs with 32 gigabytes of RAM each. The machine had 48 core CPU and lots of RAM. And so this is a strong, dedicated machine we purchased specifically for this kind of work. It's not a full warehouse uh, of, of servers. And from the software side of things, uh, most of the heavy lifting was done by the Hugging Face Python library, which provides free and open access to the base models and to the data sets we use to compare the results. Some of the other technologies uh, worth mentioning are NLTK for sentence separation, NumPy, of course, and JupyterLab for coding and interfacing with the computer remotely. And here are the first results. This table shows the perplexity scores of our models on our ADS dataset, as well as on various standard English datasets provided by Hugging Face. Because BERT, Cybert, and Astrobert all use different vocabularies, scores should be compared across datasets vertically and not across uh, models. Except for the two Astrobert models, those do use the same vocabulary. What these scores show is that BERT, which was trained on Wikipedia, can be retrained into Astrobert to perform best on ADS. That is to say, we have a model who has an advantage to be working on ADS as opposed to other datasets. And Cybert performs similarly on all scientific datasets. As expected, adding another task to the joint training, which is what we do for Astrobert NSP plus MLM, causes it to do worse in terms of raw perplexity score. That's because perplexity here is just measured in terms of the score on the MLM task. However, when we look at the scores on the named entity recognition task, Astrobert NSP plus MLM slightly outperforms Astrobert MLM alone. Uh, this is the F1 score across 10 cross-validation runs. And encouragingly, both of these models outperform uh, the original BERT model. 
With these encouraging results, we can now move forward on our AstroBird work. So here is a high level view of the work we plan on doing. First, we're going to need a larger NER data set. And for this, we've actually already hired um, a person to hand label more text. We'll continue exploring the best set of hyperparameters to train AstroBird. And we also want to train variants of AstroBird, such as a, a big model and a small model. Once we have a mature enough model, we plan on integrating AstroBird into our services and providing the community with access to AstroBird through the Hugging Face Model Hub. And that is the end of my presentation. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks very much, Felix. I think we've got time for one quick question, which is in the um, in Discord. Uh, Thomas says, great work. There are plenty of works of the type. How much Sunbird knows in the, in the zero shoot setting about real world? The question is, have you already tried to check how much AstroBird knows about astronomy? Yes, thanks for the question. Uh, so as you saw in the last uh, results slide, you can take the base BERT model and it gets pretty good results on the NER task, 85% of you know, accuracy, well, 85, 85 F1 score, it's not exactly a percentage, um, on the NER task. So the question is really is how much are we improving by training our own? Um, a substantial amount in, in my opinion, but it's definitely the base BERT not, model does know something about the, the English used in astronomy which makes sense. It's also English. It's not a foreign language. Great. Thank you very much. I think there, there might be some more questions coming through, but we'll defer those to the channel. Let's thank uh, Felix again.